the National Animal Genetic Resource Center and Data Bank is mandated to undertake comprehensive animal breeding program in Uganda so that farmers can have good genetics to boost their production and productivity for better income, welfare and socioeconomic transformation. Nagrid also works with the stakeholders so that we regulate importation and use of genetic materials which are of superior in nature but also are useful and are not harmful to our environment. Additionally, uh, we are supposed to use scientific methods to promote assisted reproductive technologies, to promote embryo transfer, and to guide generally in reproductive extension services so that uh, our breeding program is regulated and controlled. Further still, we have center farms where we are supposed to exhibit the best management system on those center farms, which act as learning centers, but also act as source of genetic material for the farmers, like the good skin and the good breeding uh, material. The bull stud is a place where we rear bulls, specifically for semen collection. And this semen is used in a, an assisted repro reproductive technique called artificial insemination. Artificial insemination is a process where you introduce semen into the female reproductive tract of an animal using an artificial insemination gun. Why do we use artificial insemination? Or why should we advocate for artificial insemination? Artificial insemination is the fastest way of improving the, life, the livestock in our, our, our nation. Why? Whereas one bull can serve one animal. One ejaculate of that animal you are seeing there can serve about between 200 and 400 heads of cattle. And this semen, when it's collected, it is easily moved in liquid nitrogen, in the flask, to all different parts of the country. And also there are other issues like avoiding diseases, using bulls when they have long diet, and uh, avoiding the high costs of maintaining bulls. So really this is why we advocate for the use of artificial insemination. And you also avoid what is called inbreeding. Inbreeding is a process where you use one bull on its mother, on its daughters, on its granddaughters and things like that. But when you use different bulls in AI, you avoid all that. So you are welcome to this place. We want to thank government because it has invested a lot, as you can see. We are renovating the bull stud, that, that, that house there. They gave us a new semen processing machine. We also have a liquid nitrogen plant, which produces 84 liters of nitrogen per hour, meaning that we are able to produce about 2,000 liters of nitrogen in a day. This is good enough. It has removed the constraint of delivering AI to our farmers. The only snack is that we need to make farmers aware of this technique. On targets, on artificial insemination, we want to have artificial insemination in every sub county in Uganda. And this will be rolled to Paris level. We want to have productive, viable center farms serving the community and serving uh, the population. We want to make sure that we have one of the best uh, semen uh, a way for cross-breeding program. We want to make sure that the regional bank is operational and that the, the member countries from the East African community and local countries are able to conserve them with genetics here. We want to streamline the issue of the training for artificial insemination technicians. We also want to offer reproductive extension services with our partners to farmers in this country so that the, the breeding is now taken as business. 
My name is Alwa Gusiraj. I am the manager of the, the bull stud here in Nabrik and DB breeds. We have breeds of both beef and dairy, but we also have what we call dual purpose. The dual purpose ones are those that are used for production of meat and milk in reasonable quantities. Now, we have got four, four blocks where the bulls are housed. Each bull is housed in an individual pen and we have uh, over 40 pens. We currently have one block with 20 pens which is under construction and once it's done we shall have a cutting capacity of uh, about 48 bulls. Now, in this block we have four, four breeds. One of them is the Brahman. The Brahman is a beef breed of tropical origin, very resistant to our conditions of heat and humidity. It is highly adaptable to our environment. It's a, the bulls we have here of the Brahman type have been imported from South Africa and they are noted for their very high growth rates, the mature weight of Brahman animals, Brahman bulls, is about 800-900 kilograms. The cows are a little bit lower than that. That is about the Brahman. We have five, we have five Brahmans currently, which are to be used for production of semen. The third breed we have looked at today is the Jersey. The Jersey is the smallest dairy breed, produces the lowest amount of milk, but with the highest amount of butter fat. It's a small breed, the cows weigh up to about 500 kilograms, but their milk production is, is a very low compared to other dairy animals, but their inputs, their requirements are much lower, they eat much less feed, they are more resistant to our tropical conditions. So they are highly recommended for small-scale farmers who are operating in very hostile conditions. The fourth animal we have looked, to, we have looked at today is called the cemento. Uh, the original place of cemento is uh, somewhere in Switzerland, but they are, of course, after that, they have been widely distributed all over the world. I said your purpose animal producing producing a lot of milk and a lot of a lot of, a lot of meat in reasonable quantities. It has become a very popular breed in Uganda these days, but its semen is also available in Nagurik and DB. This is another block of bull pens. It houses uh, it has compartments for eight bulls, therefore we have eight pens here. We keep both here dairy, we keep dairy, beef, and your purpose. The dairy type we have is Asha and Frisian, but the beef type we have, we have uh, Boran. We have basically Boran, but we also have uh, Sahiwal here. Boran is a typical beef animal, which originates from Africa. It's a tropical animal, but most of the borans have been developed in Kenya. So many borans present here in Uganda have been imported from Kenya. So we have some two borans here. We have some two sahiwals. Sahiwals are also of tropical origin. They come from Asia, but a lot of development have also been done in Kenya. Sahiwals are dual purpose, and they are highly adaptable to our environmental conditions. We also have an Ankole bull here for purposes of conservation because to us realize there's a lot of crossbreeding with the Ankole breed and probably one day it may get extinct. So we have brought it here for purposes of semen collection and storage. So we also have semen from the Ankoles. So the best characteristics of these breeds, we shall start with the Boran. A Boran is a, as we said, is a tropical breed, but it ranges from the color 
the color ranges from white to almost dark brown. They have got a particular big hump which faces backwards. They are very hardy animals, live weight up to 800, 900 kilograms. And uh, the Sahiwals are also tropical, but they are basically diopapas. Their hump is uh, pyramid-like with the very pendulous dewlaps, sheath as measures for heat, 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 um, heat dispensing. The Ancoles are typical of their long horns. They are also predominantly present in, in Western Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, and parts of Congo. They are noted for their high, high body weights, high milk production, high butter fat content, and they are also highly adaptable to our environment. Probably what I should emphasize among all these animals we have talked about is that they are highly susceptible to ectoparasites and the biggest challenge of ectoparasites we have are the ticks which transmit what we call tick-borne diseases. There are several tick-borne diseases in Uganda, notably East Coast fever, hot water, red water, um, and so on, anaplasmosis, and all these all disease, diseases are fatal to these animals. So it is important when a farmer is keeping these animals, it should do, it should do, adopt a tick, a tick control program. Otherwise, the animals are usually affected by the tick-borne diseases. Like you've seen, most of these animals are heavy animals. And for them to give you that kind of meat, they need sufficient quantity and quality of feed. Unfortunately, what happens in Uganda is that animals feed on basically grass, but grass is not sufficient for them to put on all the weight in, they need. They need a lot of grass, a lot of supplementation in terms of concentrates, and the, and, and, the, and the salt and then probably they can give you some reasonable amount of uh, meat. And My name is Elizabeth Bikawa. I work here as a senior laboratory technician. Here in the lab we do many things but now I'm talking about preparation for semen collection. We prepare every, every means that fish or vagina. It's made of rubber, hard rubber, then liner, then corn, and then at the end we put a tube, after which we cover with a jacket, because we don't want our cement to be destroyed with the rays, sun rays. We prepare it overnight, if we have to prepare the cement collection tomorrow, and then we put the heavy in the oven for sterility and want to keep it warm at 60 degrees centigrade. Therefore, when we put it there, we put in water, warm water, to make it warm because animals are warm-blooded. We also open up another valve when we prepare it the next day. We blow in air. That air makes it tight to represent a cow, a real cow, because we don't want the bull to suffer, we want it to enjoy. We blow in air, and when we are ready to go for semen collection, we apply a lubricant. A lubricant represents a cow on heat, because the cow on heat has mucus. Therefore, when we put on lubricant, it makes the heavy smooth so that we don't hurt the penis of the bull. And after which, we put in a thermometer to measure exactly what temperature are we going with to the bull. We prefer putting 50 degrees centigrade. By the time we go for collection, it will have stabilized to the right temperature.
The tube is for us to collect semen from the bull to cover the semen. So this would represent already prepared AV. Then next we are going to... Where we are going to put the cement, immediately it comes in. To maintain that temperature, and when we bring the cement, we put it in 33, 34 degrees Celsius. Therefore, if there is a green color, we consider the sample dirty and we discard it. If there is a yellow color, it means the bull has a wound and produces pus. Therefore, we start caring now for the bull because we must treat the bull from the injury, from the, the pus, we treat it to heal, and still the sample will be discarded because it will be considered dirty. If there is hair or dust, the hair can be seen through the glass, and dust can be seen through the glass to be disposed. That means it is dirty. But this sample we have got today is very clean. As far as I'm concerned, the color is strong enough. It is, shows it is heavily concentrated. I'm Giramia Sharon, a laboratory technologist working with Nagrik and DB. Microscopic examination, you go ahead and do microscopic examination. Examination under a microscope. And the microscope, we are going to look at individual sperm cells. Put a drop of semen on the slide. We are checking for the wave. Our semen is very good, the motility is good. And the microscope, what do you look at? Individual sperm cells. Because we are interested in live sperm cells and progressive sperm cells. That's why we look at them under the microscope. So what I did, I got a pipette, picked a sample of semen, and put it on a slide under a microscope and covered it with a cover slip. The cover slip was just to spread the sample. After you spread the sample, you are able to see the semen clearly. You're looking at individual sperm cells, the motility. How fast are the sperm cells moving? In which direction are the sperm cells moving? Because we are interested in progressive movement, movement that can reach somewhere movement that can swim and go and cause fertilization. So that is what we did. Using CASA computer assisted semen analyzer. The analyzer helps to analyze for you all those parameters. You don't have to just estimate the progressive percentage. The computer measures all those parameters and gives them to you in percentages. That's why we looked at the percentage of progressive movement, we looked at the percentage of motile sperm cells and all that, the percentage of bent tails, because we are not interested in the bent tails. If the higher percentage is bent tails, then we shall not process that semen because it's not good. But if the highest percentage is progressive, then we shall go ahead and process the semen. And what we looked at, the semen was, most of them were progressive. So that sample is very good, and we are going to process it. I'm Helen Dagire, BSc Biochemistry, MS Molecular Biology, the in charge artificial insemination, Nagrik and DB. I established the concentration of the semen, which was collected and picked it from the water bath, and used the spectrophotometer to establish that concentration, the concentration of sperm cells per meal. And the spectrophotometer is able to tell me the, how many sperm cells are there per meal and then 
give, how many doses would be prepared from that particular ejaculate, and give the amount of diluent which will be added depending on the number of sperm cells packed per dose. In this laboratory, we pack 20 million sperm cells per dose. So all, basing on the, basing on the data entered into the spectrophotometer, the doses which, which shall be packed from that particular ejaculate were established. We added an extender. An extender was added following the results given by the spectrophotometer. To distill the water, then from the distiller, we go right ahead of autoclave the water to ensure maximum purity. No organism is growing in the no organism is growing and no salts. We are still working against bacterial growth and osmotic potentials, which would be detrimental to the sperm cells. This was 5.5 mils. I dilute one to one. I add on 5.5 mils of the diluent. We are putting the extender. 15.5 mils. The total dilution adds on the semen. The refrigerator at 4 degrees Celsius, where we are going to put our semen to equilibrate for four hours in here. After equilibration, then we shall go and pack. And this packing machine is also at four degrees Celsius, so it's at the same temperature. Here, you pack the semen. So the semen is brought into the packing machine. This packing machine packs the semen in the straw, prints the bull identification on the straw, and also seals the straw. Semen is, the, the, the straws are here, and then as the straws move, the semen is packed into the straws, and then they are sealed, and then they are printed, since it has an inbuilt printer in there. So after you've printed and everything is done, you've packed the semen, the semen is collected in this, Side, and then after that, you put the semen on the semen on the semen racks, ready for freezing. The liquid nitrogen valve is opened to release liquid nitrogen into the freezer. The process is all computerized, so the commands are from the control panel. It tells you when to put in semen in the freezer. The freezer has to be at four, then you put in the semen because the semen was packed at four degrees Celsius. After you put in the semen at four degrees Celsius, the freezing starts. It starts from four and continues to lower until it reaches negative 140 degrees Celsius. After it has reached that temperature, the freezing is done. You remove the semen from the freezing chamber into the liquid nitrogen container or the cement bank. The cement is now at the temperature of liquid nitrogen, which is negative 196 degrees Celsius. After you've done that, you do what you call post thaw. You're examining the cement after the process. So you thaw the cement in liquid in water, which is at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds to around one minute. After thawing, you wipe off the water off the straw and cut the straw and put the sample or the semen on a slide and cover with a cover slip. And then examine under a microscope. What you'll see is the motility. If the motility is above 50%, then the semen is good for use for artificial insemination. We have the uh, framework for animal genetic resources in the world. We have also framework from East African community for animal genetic resources. We have also framework for IGAD, Intergovernmental uh, Authority.
involvement. And this framework now also uh, is enshrined in our act, the Animal Building Act, the Animal Building Policy. Now, mainly is that uh, we have uh, specific breeds of cattle, goats, and pigs which are in the act. There are those which pose, which have uh, genetic defects. Those ones we are not supposed to import. Them. There are semen which are imported. If they have to meet a certain minimum uh, quality and quality standards, if they do not meet our criteria as per the Act, we don't allow them. We have to work with the farmers to undertake crossbreeding program. Now they have to observe our guidelines. Now, mainly but partners that we are going to be engaged in breeding, they have to work with us to get those guidelines. If they do not meet those standards as per the Act, then they face challenges and problems. When so, an animal is on heat, and an animal on heat has specific characteristics. It stands to be mounted. It has several other characteristics also. For example, it is restless. It is mounting others. It may lose appetite. It has swelling of the vulva and reddening. There's also some increase in temperature. It also mounts other animals. It could even mount the farmer if, there's no, if it's alone or if there's no other animal to mount. It could even end up finding, finding it mounting the farmer. Then it will be ready to be served. An artificial insemination technician will be called who will come with the straw of semen in a liquid nitrogen flask at negative 196 degrees centigrade. The straw of semen is picked from the flask and thawed in water, which is at 35 degrees centigrade. This is loaded in a gun, the straw, and it's cut with a pair of scissors. It is loaded with a sheath, which sheath prevents spread of diseases from one animal to the other, and it also helps that the straw is not left in the animal, in the reproductive tract of the animal. Then, finally, the semen is delivered into the reproductive tract of the female animal, and we expect conception to take place. This truck was purposely bought for transporting liquid nitrogen to different districts in the country, and that's why they mounted the tank. The tank is 600 liters. And when we are carrying to the districts, we know we have so many, and their technician is there, farmers that need liquid nitrogen. We also mount on some other small dewars, 50 liters, 35 liters, around this big one. So essentially, we sometimes carry 1,300 or 1,500 liters of liquid nitrogen to the field. Well, well, this one is six, then we put on some others around it. We also take semen, we take sheaths, we take gloves, anything that goes with artificial insemination. We carry it. Those people around us, like Central, they come. Wakiso come. Sometimes ginger, when they are bad off, they can come here. All Kampala people come here. All the Entebbe people area, they come here. But those who are far, and sometimes they might find difficulties in transporting themselves with the big tanks of 35, we help them and take them near. We take nitrogen, for example, to people in Chisoro, Kabale, Rukunjiri, Ntungamo, Chiruhura, we take to Fort Porto, Chenjojo, Chegegwa, Mubende, though sometimes Mitiana and Masaka, they can come, but also when we have a delivery, we take it there. We are targeting a farmer. The reason why we deliver to these people, we don't want the cost of AI to be so expensive. We want to reduce the cost of AI so that even a poor farmer can afford it. This is a liquid nitrogen plant. First of all, nitrogen is got from atmospheric gases, whereby we have oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and inert gases. So we play around those gases with a machine. 
It starts from the compressor. The compressor will pull all inside, sucks in all the air, including the gas and the water. That is the humidity. It removes dust, feathers, because there is a mat that separates the gas and the dust and the insects and so on. So we have a bit clean air that goes inside. It is stored somewhere in a cylinder and it becomes plenty. The humidity is catered for because the water goes down and the air stays up, so the water is drawn out. We remain with gas, but complete gas. It continues forward for drying. We have drying parts. They dry the air, no more humidity at all. We make sure it is dry. We have also filters that remove oil because the compressor, we have some oil there, running oil. So the excess oil is removed by filters. Then the gas continues ahead and we remove the oxygen. We remove the carbon dioxide. We continue with nitrogen gas and inert gases. It is stored in another place whereby it is ready to go into the cryogenerator. The cryogenerator has some small tubes because inert gases are very small. So they are drawn off in a tube and we remain with the dry liquid nitrogen, liquid gas. The gas will remain with dry nitrogen gas. Dry nitrogen gas is put within the cryogenerator. The cryogenerator is supplied with chilled water from chillers. That water is supposed to go around within the cryogenerator to remove the heat. Because as we are working, there is a piston and displacer that work together, compressing the nitrogen gas. So it creates heat. And the chilled water is the one that removes that heat, will remain with the, a good temperature for turning into liquid nitrogen. At a temperature of negative 196 degrees Celsius is where the nitrogen is produced from gas. Then when it is liquid already, it is flown into the tank. We have a tank of 3,000 liters, so we store it there, and we can remove it and put it in small doors, or we put it in a delivery truck. One is that uh, we have uh, land encroachment by squatters and by encroachers, so we need to deal with that challenge quickly. We also have uh, some staff gaps, so we need to fill those gaps quickly. We also need to enhance the capacity of our staff and our partners so that they have uh, a capacity to implement this plan comprehensively. We have uh, challenges of weather, we have challenges of disease outbreak and so forth, but together with the Ministry of Agriculture, with the veterinary extension workers and the local government, we think that we can uh, solve those challenges. You see right now, in the country, we are just carrying out a few, a few numbers of artificial insemination, inseminations, about 50,000. And this is due, one, to the limited number of AI technicians. Then also two, due to the limited number of infrastructure. We should have as many as maybe over 100 pools, because this will diversify the gene pool within the, what? Within the country. So with the, with, the, with the many more years to come, we need to have many more eye technicians trained. We need to have many more eye technicians equipped. We need to have them undergoing refresher courses. We need to have many more bulls because right now we are having about 20. As I've told you, we need about 100. We need the, okay, the AI people to be given transport. We also need the transport to deliver this nitrogen and cement to various parts of the country.
we need a bad for truck such that one goes to the west, one goes to the north, one goes to the east, one goes to the center. And also we need more people to be employed in this organization. Right now, we are not doing very well because as I told you, Kenya, for example, carries up over 1 million AI inseminations. In Uganda, it's just 50,000. The only good thing now, which Uganda should be proud of, we have been chosen as a regional gene bank. Huh? A regional gene bank. That means we can pick semen, we can pick embryos from our own breeds, but also from other breeds in the Eastern African region. Where we are standing, is the gene bank which serves both as a national gene bank as well as a regional gene bank for 13 eastern african countries and the, the main purpose is for cryo conservation of indigenous animal resources within the region five years strategic plan which is going to guide our operations how our group is going to operate this plan has already been shared with stakeholders. We have a very viable capacity to produce liquid nitrogen. We have a viable capacity to produce semen, high quality semen, for our farmers in Uganda, but also for the region. We recently defended in Nairobi uh, our capacity to host the regional gene bank for the for 13 countries of East Africa and Igad countries. So we are a regional, we are a host for a regional gene bank for animal genetic resources and conservation. So I think that is a very big achievement. We defended that. We are also going to put a robust program working with NATS, working with operational wealth creation, working with Makerere, working with Haifa, working with pharma groups to promote that future insemination and other assisted reproductive technologies. We are putting a very robust program in terms of plants, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of human resource alignment so that our farmers become centers of excellence. Some of these farms have already started to excel. We are also building support and network to promote public-private partnership to develop this farm so that quickly they become centers of excellence. And also the rural poultry development program, we are going to develop our own uh, uh, high-growing, fast-growing uh, indigenous chicken of Ugandan milk, and uh, all these programs the pipeline and we think this will help the farmers from the perspective of genetics to improve and do better. We must do business unusual. We must develop a culture of hard work. We must develop a culture of working with partners. We must implement a strategic plan because the problem has been a lack of strategic plan. So we must holistically implement a strategic plan work with partners in a public-private partnership, work with the Ministry of Agriculture and its agencies, work with the private sector so that we can realize the dream of uh, improved genetic breeding in Uganda.